Okay, so I wanted to discuss a couple of, um, I don't know, maybe they're advanced topics, but they're basically um, how to very specifically art direct a tree in, uh, in grow effects. Let's say you have a concept and the branches have to go this particular way. They want this exact tree. Um, so how would you go about doing this? Uh, so I have before you a what looks to be maybe a mess of splines. Um, and what this creates is this kind of, um, this is the meta mesh of that, which, um, you know, with a little bit of displacement and stuff like that could be pretty cool. Um, but what I'm going to do with this is I want to take this into ZBrush. Now, some special considerations here. One of the reasons why we use grow effects and we don't just, you know, ZBrush our trees is that Grow effects allows us to animate, um, you know, these trees with wind animation and whatnot. So when you when you consider doing this, you really need to be cognizant of where your tree will animate and where it will not. Your larger, major branches, the trunk, stuff like that. Uh, for this particular example, I'm going to say they're not going to animate, um, but you know, secondary and tertiary branches, definitely, and then leaves, I do want those uh, to animate. So as I come to this tree and I start to put on, you know, a second layer of, um, of branches, and let's say before, not money money, just branches, it's not a money tree. Uh, I wish it were. So, uh, I could come here and create a path distributor and I could set this to be on all of my uh, all of these branches which I very specifically drawn out okay so one thing that we, we can do is um, when meshing you can mesh a child and not its parents so I could add a uh, cylinder mesh to these guys and just give them the good old whatever the, this default. Um, this is not really the purpose of the tutorial, but I want to you know show you what I'm what the end result will be here. So if I were to come to um, to mesh, It's going to think. Actually, I think I can just turn these guys off. Yeah. I just want to turn off their visibility. Sorry, this has changed recently, and I'm still getting used to it. Do, 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 do. No. Oh, no. All right, there we go. Um, so now I've hidden that mesh that what I'm going to do is um, that's going to be a super high res mesh, like hero tree. We're going to be right up on that guy. Um, but I still want to be able to make branches and twigs and these guys blow in the wind and these will be able to and what I will do is uh, have this my grow effects live and then I will also have my grow effects baked and this is going to be a sculpted tree and when I do this I'm going to need to be cognizant of you know how high up I go with my sculpt uh, you know really kind of keep it down here don't go crazy because obviously if you move these faces beyond where this you know is going to animate um, you're gonna be in trouble you're gonna have you know floating branches and, and so on and so forth but if you plan smart you can get away with something like this so real quick I just kinda wanna show you guys this tree um, because I'm using a couple of different things that we haven't discussed so I'm gonna go back to lines I'm gonna turn off my baked tree and set everything visible. 
And then I'm going to turn everything off. Except for... Okay, so what I've done here is I have set up a path, right? So this is just a single um, distributor, right? If I come into here, you'll see it's just a regular old distributor and I've used my normal old tricks. So a randomize with a curve on it. And then after the fact, I optimize the steps so my uh, meta mesh is not just totally crazy. So after that, I want, you know, this can make a fairly boring mesh. And if I'm, you know, looking for something a little bit more interesting, um, as far as, you know, roots and systems down at the base and, you know, getting some cool detail out of it. Uh, often what I will do is create a, um, this is a path position distributor, right? And what I'll do next is, let me show you. So this is doing a copy. So under your modifiers, you'll see this copy direction guy. So what this does is, well, first, my uh, path position distributor, it's set to a count of seven. So it's birthing um, at position zero. Remember this guy, you can tell it to birth anywhere, right? I could tell it to birth at 100%. By default, when it comes in, it's gonna birth at 100%. Or I can tell it to birth at zero, which in this case I'm doing. And then I'm making seven of those. So that defines these you know, little green lines. There are seven of them and I'm giving it a copy direction, which makes these lines exactly follow this. But on top of that, I'm doing a radial offset here and throwing a curve into it. So at the base of the tree, I've got a larger offset and at the top of the tree, I have a smaller offset. And that's how you end up with, with this kind of shape. Uh, on top of that, I'm then throwing a noise and again, a curve so that I have more of noise down here and no noise up there. And I'm getting these like jaggy dudes. Um, I don't really care. Once it meta meshes, it's gonna kind of resolve that stuff and it's really not gonna be a uh, big deal. And then I'm optimizing the steps again so my meta mesh isn't totally insane. Uh, on top of that, then I'm adding this root system. And these roots, they're birthed off of the trunk mesh, so if we come over here, we'll see a path position distributor, same as with the uh, trunk mesh. It's assigned a position, its position is five. Uh, and then I throw the hard bend on it. So very similar to the uh, Cambodia tree thing I showed you. Uh, then a random direction. Then I'm throwing a um, vector direction, which is telling another target point. And I picked this point here in the middle. And all that's doing is it's like, you know, driving out from the center and helping to make these guys kind of radiate out and not get too like confuddled inside of themselves with this random direction, which, which I don't really want. Um, and, you know, pushing them out quite a bit. And you can see if I like pull them in, push them out. Um, and then I'm adding a vector direction and this is my same old little trick. Um, throwing a curve on it so that I can control, you know, the contour. So these guys, they're just kind of chilling. And then as they get longer, they, you know, swoop down. So that'll give the impression that, the, you know, they're going into the earth. Okay, so that is the trunk and root system and, and this basic uh, trunk. Now, I could do this trunk a little bit differently. Uh, and what I'm going to show you on these next, on the branches, let's say you wanted a very specific um, contour to this trunk. You can do that with Grow Effects. So B1 here, you'll see I have this branch. The next thing you'll notice is under my layers, I have these useful branch splines. So under modifiers and direction modifiers, there is a modifier called spline direction. And you guess it, this will follow the direction of a spline that you determine. So this guy, B1, is following line three. And uh, I should have labeled my stuff more appropriately, but I did not because this is just a quick lesson. But, um, you know, obviously the smart thing to do here would be 
you know, to label this guy uh, B1 uh, spline direction. Something very clever like that. Um, and now, uh, a couple of important things though. When I draw these, I draw them in a top down view. You would think, and this is kind of counterintuitive, that uh, I could come in here in like a front view and kind of draw this thing exactly where I want and that then the branch will do what I want and you would be wrong. Um, doesn't really work that way. So generally I kind of come into a top down view and just really kind of randomly draw something because then once you uh, throw the, sorry, top level, once you add this modifier, this spline direction guide to it, when you come back to this, now you really have kind of full control over where you want this uh, branch to go. And I can, you know, go, go totally nuts. Okay, and in that way you can very specifically draw draw out using a series of splines and I literally, I just copied this guy four times and then um, I think I only did three branches but um, that's you know how I did it and you could do the same thing with you know the trunk you could draw draw out a spline tell it to follow it the nice thing with this too is that um, it doesn't have to be oriented in the same um, you know position here so if you come into this spline direction, you can come back and you can say with this orientation, I want to rotate this guy over here, but I still want it to follow the contours and everything of this spline. And you can boop, boop, you know, yank on it as such. So that gets me my tree. And then I, you know, turn all these guys on. Um, I'm going to ignore these secondary branches, but this is very important to consider um, if you're going to do something like this, if you want to go, you know, totally crazy. Uh, because what I would do with this is take this out to ZBrush because while, you know, the um, the MetaMesh, it, MetaMesh does a good job, um, it's fairly slow for the amount of detail that you're getting, but um, you don't really have a lot of control. You, you know, you're definitely bound by the UVs and you're not going to be unwrapping this thing or anything like that. So, you know, this would be great for a mid-ground uh, tree with, with a displacement map and some good, with some good mapping. Like, this will really, really hold up. And even, you know, fair foreground, if you, like, put some moss on this and really, you know, um, showed it some attention, you can get away with this for a lot of stuff. Um, however, if the, you know, the camera started and, you know, you're kind of panning across this thing and zooming out or something and there's like action on this, that's probably not going to hold up. But let's say the camera came out and you still wanted to see, you know, stuff moving and rustling. So we want to maintain our ability to, um, use the procedural animation tools and whatnot inside of GrowFX while also sending stuff out to ZBrush when needed. Um, every tree does not need this. This, I mean, literally, this will get you so far with good mapping. I really can't stress that enough. So what I don't want you guys to do is just like go out and, I'm ZBrushing everything. Um, yeah, you're gonna waste a lot of time. This really, I promise, can can get you really far. Just focus on the on the textures and on the the uh, the shader itself. But in those instances where you would have to do this, what I would do is um, once I've set my mesh and I've dialed this guy in, and when I'm if I'm going to export something like this, um, I don't I'm not looking to get a ton of detail out of this because uh, I'm not going to use um, grow effects displacement tool I'm going to sculpt it and then dino or um, decimate it and, and bring this bad boy back so what I would do is make sure that I have convert to mesh checked on I would come back here up to edit mesh I would copy this and I would collapse to and put it under a layer called egrowfx tree baked which I have already done 
so I don't need to do that again. And I would have this guy, which is an editable mesh. Then I would come out and I would export this guy, export selected, and I would export him into my 2ZBrush directory, tree art directed baked OBJ. All right? Then I would bring that into ZBrush, where you know I could start to sculpt to my heart's content and you know again create some insert brushes for branches. If you guys wanted to check out that um, a Z tree, anything like that, to you know give some more little stuff on this, some extra branches, um, all these little details that you focus on in a trunk, especially you know when it's like a hero guy. I go get yourself some uh, some alphas or create yourself some alphas for bark and whatnot and you can you know really um, you know detail the shit out of this thing and when you're done then just like we did with the rocks remember this portion is not going to animate um, just like we did with the rocks and you know all of this stuff you can just kind of smooth that out and by the time you're done and you've sculpted all this stuff in, you're really not going to notice these like hard edges. And and really, you know, stuff like that, unless I'm looking right at it by the time there are uh, leaves and, and whatnot, um, you know, it can be argued, nobody's ever going to see that. So, you know, always being cognizant of your level of detail. But you could sculpt this. Go, go crazy, go nuts. Once you're done, come back, decimate this guy, bring him back into um, into Max, and render, you know, as you would. Uh, or, you know, you can always project back the detail and retopologize it. Uh, all that good, uh, fun stuff. This is not. This is like. Um, I don't know, one in every 20 trees or something like that. This, this is, you don't have to do this all the time. So I want you guys to know this is, this is out there and you can certainly mess with this, but really because of the procedural nature of this uh, and, and grow effects, I would advise you to stay in this kind of uh, neighborhood and, you know, work with its, um, displacement plugins and getting you know a decent mesh getting a, di a displacement map and and messing with that stuff so that is kind of an art directed tree and how you would use splines to specifically draw out branches the trunk using the copy direction uh, modifier and in order to give your you know trunk base some added detail and interest all right